Hi there. So today I want to talk about what you should bring with you if you'll be traveling or living on the road and you have dogs and you think you'll spend a lot of time in a desert. This will be good for anyone that is, you could be on a short road trip where you think you'll do some hiking in the desert or those of you who maybe are planning to van life or travel as a nomad and you have dogs with you you're probably going to spend a decent amount of time in the desert because that's where it's warm and it's a pretty prime spot to be when winter hits. So I'm coming to you today from the U.S. Southwest. I'm in the um, a fairly remote part of the Sonoran Desert in Arizona. We live full time now on the road. We've been on the road for like five years traveling around and we've spent all of our winters in the desert southwest and even a good portion of springs and falls there too in various places because we just have fallen in love with the desert. I mean it's really fun but there are some things to consider when you're traveling with dogs. We do. So here goes. I'm going to give you the top things that we um, always bring with us whenever we travel or hike in the desert environment. So the first one that I'll say would be uh, you'll need something to carry water with you, especially if you're going to be doing any type of hiking or exploring around. Make sure you have something to carry water with you. Now, and of course then the water itself is part of the tip, but that might be pretty obvious. And even the tip to carry water uh, you know, a, a, some sort of bag. So, um, something like camel packs work good because they have the bladder in them, um, or something like that with a water bladder in it that you can fill up and have water on your back. But I mean, you don't have to go out and buy one of those per se. You could just carry some sort of pack and put bottles of water in it. Um, when we backpack, we have, they're typically referred to as platypus bottles or collapsible water bottles. Um, so they get really small when they're not filled up, but then you can fill those up and put those in the pack as well. And when they're not filled up, they're pretty light and don't take up a lot of space. So you could just do that. You could have a, some sort of little pack and put your water in it. But regardless, you need to be thinking about how you're going to carry water because you're going to need a decent amount of water for yourself, for your mate, and then for your dogs. We travel around and hike with three dogs and that means we gotta take a lot of water with us when we go out venturing. So something like a pack makes sense. You're not really gonna be carrying bottles with you. Um, and again, this may kind of seem like a common sense tip, but remember there have been plenty of stories of people that have underestimated their need for water in the desert and gotten themselves into a sticky situation. Um, so avoid that. Not only take the water, of course, but take out some sort of bag that you can carry with. Makes it easier. Uh, okay, so that's number one. A pack to carry water in and your water. Number two would kind of go along with that and for dogs specifically, you'll want to have some, some, be thinking how you're going to deliver the water to the dogs, right? So they need to be able to drink it. So some sort of bowl uh, that they can drink out of. There's a lot of good options out there. There are collapsible bowls and again anything collapsible is pretty nice to have because it won't take up extra space whether it's in your bag or your pocket or whatever but you know you, we've done this before on hikes where we're putting it in our, in our hands and trying to give the dogs the water in that way. Um, not the optimal way that you want to deliver water to the dog so some sort of bowl. There's the ones that smash down, the collapsible ones. There's some that are just like a canvas material and they squish down. Um, honestly, for, for the first one, the bag and the collapsible bowls, definitely check out thrift shops. There's lots of stuff like that around at thrift shops if you're trying to save money. Um, or even like Craigslist, Facebook type stuff, yard sales. Lots of people get into, you know, hiking or something like this or they had a dog and they don't anymore. So you can usually find these things without having to necessarily buy new. And as you'll see the rest of the things on this list, this whole list, you'll be able to get for relatively cheap. And in order for, uh, you know, safety reasons, you're really going to want to have these things with you. So let's jump to the next thing. And now we'll really get into comfort and safety. A tip that you might not know if you haven't done a lot of hiking or traveling in the desert. 
is a comb. Yes, a comb. We had to learn about this from our travels and we had to learn this the hard way. When you're hiking in the desert, everything is pokey, very pokey. Even the trees are spines and you know about cactus, even if you haven't spent a lot of time in the desert, I'm sure you've seen plenty of movies where people are falling into cactus. Um, it's not an exaggeration and there are certain types of cactus that are worse than others. The big ones, the saguaros and the uh, maybe even prickly pears, uh, those actually aren't going to probably be your worst nightmare. It's, it's a, well, generally smaller. They can get tall. Uh, a cactus that's called choya, affectionately sometimes referred to as jumping choya, uh, sometimes teddy bear choya. <laughs> um, teddy bear choya makes it sound super cute, uh, but when you get too close to it, you'll find out it's not that sweet. Uh, and jumping choya kind of goes with the name because I learned the hard way when I brushed, just brushed by the plant and it was stuck in the side of my leg. All I did was brush it. And I didn't understand it. I was like, how is this thing in my leg? Um, and then I couldn't get it out because it's a ball of spines stuck in your leg. Um, and you, so you can't grab it and pull it out, right? Uh, so that's where the comb comes in. And for your dogs, this is not a happy thing to, for them to deal with. Uh, so you wanna try to avoid them, but they still might get spines. And especially for these choyas, the comb makes it easy to just, you put it under the, the spine, the, the, near the skin or near the contact, and then you pluck it off and that will get the bulk of it off. You may have left a few spines in there, the ones that are really in, in, your, in your leg or in their paw, and, um, but then you can now grab the spines and pull them out. Uh, they're, not, they're not really barbed, like in the sense of like if you've dealt with porcupine quills, um, so they're not barbed, which is a good thing, but they're also kind of sticky. It's not perfectly a straight shot, um, but you can get them out if you can get a good hold on them. Really only possible until you get that big ball of spines off so you can actually grab them, okay? So trust me, a comb, what an easy thing. You probably have one in your whatever, drawer, medicine cabinet somewhere in the house or someone that, you know, just has one they don't need. A little, literally a little plastic comb will do the trick. Okay, so make sure you bring that with you. You trust me when you meet the Choya, you're gonna be so glad you brought a stinking comb along with you and it won't be too heavy or take up too much space. So really good thing to have along. Now I'll add to that the next one, along those same, same lines, um, bring a pair of tweezers, just a simple pair of tweezers. Also maybe will help you out in case you get some other type of um, thing in the dog's paws that you just need help grabbing. Um, something like a tweezers, sometimes a pliers works better, sometimes not, because a lot of other things are still small and thin. And so you'll find that something like a pliers actually has a tough time grabbing onto it. So I'd say just a simple tweezers would be good to have in the event, you know, that they get something else and you need to get a grip on it. Again, another small thing, easy, lightweight, cheap. A comb and a tweezers. The last one I'll leave you with is Benadryl. So dogs like to get into stuff and you know us curious humans like me also like to get into stuff because I've had my fair share of Benadryl. Um, so depending on you know individual response to things um, some of us including our dogs have more of a reaction to say bites and stings and, and stuff like that. So there's lots of things in the desert that they could get into. Uh, ants, bees, etc. So it's good to have some Benadryl so that you can, um, you know, if they have any type of reaction or allergic reaction, you can get some Benadryl in them to help them out. Um, even for us, the first time our dog met Choya, he uh, got quite a bit in him and he didn't know what it was and so he actually tried to get it out with his mouth. And um, he had a few spines in his mouth, so we had to pull them out. Um, it was easier actually to give him some Benadryl um, so that his body could, you know, kind of handle that. But it helped him get a little sleepy so that we could try to pull the spines out. So that was the, that was the goal there. Um, so lots of good uses for Benadryl. And again, all these things might even save you as well. So that's the list. A few other things to think about while we're talking about this. Uh, some people put boots on their dogs. 
We did try boots on our dogs. Um, it was hit and miss. Uh, our big dog, the one that got into the Choya, that story, we tried boots after that thinking that he would, uh, maybe it would help him out. And he did not like the boots. It was really hard to get him to take the boots. In fact, he walked so strangely in the boots that he ended up twisting his ankle and then we had that to deal with. So, um, yeah, we just skipped the boots. And what's interesting though, is that second, third season around coming to the desert, really by the second season, the second time he spent time in the desert, we started to notice amazingly that he avoided these cactus, especially these choya. And I have no idea how, it's very impressive. Um, so he learned, so your dogs can learn. And I've heard this from other people too. Your dogs will learn to avoid uh, the cactus. They'll learn how to operate in the desert. And we've always wondered, you know, how um, certain dogs that are desert dwellers or coyotes that are out and about how do they uh, deal with the cactus. Apparently, they figure out how to deal with it actually better than us humans because we get it more now than they do. He like never gets one. Uh, he never gets any spines now. And he likes to chase rabbits, so he will take off and run and actually swerve through the uh, the desert. And I always worry, and he comes back with no issues. So very impressive. But do know that if you plan on spending a lot of time in the desert, that don't worry. It's very likely that your dog will get used to desert conditions, aside from heat. And that's where one and two on this list come to be very important. Make sure they have water because for dogs, that is nearly the only way they can cool down. So yeah, make sure you have plenty of water for them. You never know, things happen. You just wanna make sure that you're all, you know, able to cool down and have enough water. And especially for them, they don't sweat like we do. So they need water to cool down. So um, yeah, so I think that that is a pretty good list of things. If you're going out, just five things, it's not gonna cost you much, as, hardly at all you can get these things like i said on some you know thrift stores or or maybe from a friend or something and it's going to be a lifesaver when you're out there so happy trails in the desert uh have a great time it's an awesome beautiful place the desert is not the wasteland that some people make it out to be it's so beautiful the sunsets the starry skies and your dogs can actually have more fun in the desert too especially if you just bring this list of five things so I hope that helps you guys um, for anyone traveling in the desert with dogs uh, if you want to add anything to the list from your experiences just go ahead and drop it in the comments people can read it and get ideas maybe we'll get ideas too we learn every day um, so yeah let's uh, let's share these ideas and if you liked the video if it was helpful go ahead and just give it a like let other people know that this is useful information and if you're curious about our whole lifestyle uh, you can subscribe to this channel paradise on pennies this is where we put stuff out like tips like this as well as just stories of our adventures. We're on the road, like I said, for five years. We started off living in an SUV, believe it or not. That's a long story. It's here if you want to find it. And now we're in a pop-up truck camper and it is home for life. So it's a great time and it's made even better with our dogs by our side. So, all right guys, that's it for today. Thanks so much and I will see you guys next time. Bye.